Okay. I am calling the uh, commission, Arts Commission meeting for September 17th, 2020 to order. Will the clerk's office kindly call roll? Chair Breer. Here. Vice Chair Sprout. Here. Second Vice Chair Plaster. Excused. Commissioner Shefsik. Here. Commissioner Tupaz. Uh, here. Commissioner Trimble is excused. Commissioner Carpell is excused. Commissioner Curran. Here. Commissioner Loudon. Excused. Commissioner Pacheco. Here. Commissioner Strauss. Excused. Commissioner Haynes Hamlin. Here. Thank you. You have a quorum. Thank you. Item number three, the public comment. Comments during this portion of the agenda must be limited to matters of the agenda for the action. If you wish to be heard, come forward and give your name for the record, the amount of discussion as well as the amount of time any single speaker is allowed may be limited. Item number four, for possible action to approve the final minutes by reference of the special meeting of August 20th, 2020. Do we hear a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. All in favor of approving the minutes from August 20 of 2020, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. And we have approved the minutes. Uh, going now to item number five, a report by Jim Breer, Arts Commission Chair, regarding the monthly summary of current initiatives, cultural events, and opportunities. And we'll jump over to that. Um, First off, I wanted to, on, the, on, the, on behalf of the entire commission, I'd like to thank Jerry Shefsick for his many years of service to the City of Las Vegas Arts Commission. Uh, Jerry, thank you for your time and, and your expertise, and, I, and, I, and on a, uh, we are so grateful for your service to the community and we'll miss your presence here at the meetings. Uh, on a personal note, well, I would have to say that the, our, uh, the, that the art uh, department and the entire art uh, community is so enriched by having you as part of it. And uh, well, well, you're, well, I am uh, personally I'm ever so grateful and I, and I think I can speak for uh, that community as a, as a whole. So please join me in a round of applause for Mr. Shefsik. The patterns very kind, thank you. Yes, uh, uh, thank you, Jerry. The patterns exhibition featuring artworks by David Baird Crystal DiPietro, Jeff Fulmer, Mary Hill, Kim Johnson, and Robert Stark are on display through November 25th, 2020 in the Charleston Heights Arts Center Gallery at 800 Brush Street. The exhibition features artworks that explore design and use the element of texture and patterns. The Windows on First featuring Bouquet of Fission by artist Sean Russell is on display through January 24th, 2021 and is available to view at all times at the City of Las Vegas City Hall over on 8, 495 Main Street, along 1st Street. The installation features a collection of three individual artworks that refer reference the visual and metaphorical relationships between a bouquet of flowers and an atomic blast to serve as a reminder of Las Vegas' past and its blo blossoming present and future. The Office of Cultural Affairs Public Art Program seeks to commission an artist or team of artists to create an original work of art for the West Charleston Boulevard underpass. The request for proposals is open now and it closes on October 8th, 2020. For more information, visit ngemnv.com. That's ngemnv.com. The City of Las Vegas and Clark County are looking for nominations for individuals to be recognized in the historic Westside Legacy Park. Nominations must exhibit that they are the individual that has made, uh, must uh, exhibit that the individual has made a significant contribution to the historic Westside community through their activism, philanthropy, outreach, education, 
public impact, partnership, business development, artistic or cultural merit, and other efforts in a long-term and demonstrable way. The nomination form can be found at the cityoflasvegas.link slash legacy park. Nominations will be accepted until uh, Saturday, September 20th. To get that link and any other information about the Office of Culture, uh, you can contact the Office of Cultural Affairs Programming by visiting www.artslasvegas.org or call 702-229-ARTS. Do any of the commissioners have any additional events or happenings that they would like to mention? Uh, John Pacheco, does that have to be an artist that you nominate? Or somebody that's done a lot for the community on the west side? Uh, this is Commissioner Haynes Hamblin. Uh, it does not have to be an artist. It just has to be um, an individual or a group of individuals who have had a significant impact on the historic west side. Thank you. You're welcome. Commissioner Shefsick? Yes. Go ahead, One Jerry. last plug for the university. The Barrick Museum of Art has a couple of exhibitions open right now. One is called Excerpts, which are pieces from their permanent collection. And another is called Kept to Myself, which is a one-person show by Ashley Doty, uh, also open. Um, museum is open by reservation, or admission by reservation. Um, then the Donna Beam Gallery is venturing into showing exhibitions again. Um, the one coming up is Le Femme Forte, which is a group show of women artists from the Valley. Um, that, will, that one will be ready uh, for viewing on uh, September 28th. And it also is open by uh, reservation. And those can be uh, made by going to the website Donna Beam Gallery, unlv.edu slash Donna Beam Gallery, uh, and there will be a link there where you can make a reservation. Uh, it's free, and um, everyone is welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Shefsik, and, and we're going to miss those uh, updates for the UNLV Gallery openings, so if you would be kind to uh, email them to us and we can include them in the uh, monthly report, that would be great to continue that tradition. I'm happy to. Yeah. Okay, next up is the report by Office of Cultural Affairs staff regarding monthly summary of the current initiatives. And for that, we turn it over to Laura and Rebecca. This is Laura Machado, uh, Cultural Affairs staff. Um, you should have all received a packet of the staff report um, at the um, meeting announcement. We're just gonna go over a few of the projects that have updates. Uh, first, I would like to welcome and introduce our newest staff member, Mary Sabo, is the public art team's newest part-time employee. So welcome, Mary. <laughs> um, let's see. The first project we'll talk about is the Third Street Public Art Project. Building and Safety Special Inspector has improved the welding and the foundry is completing the fabrica fabrication project process um, currently for atomic tumbleweed so that it will be ready for installation hopefully within the next few weeks. The next project is the Arts District Public Art Project. The stamped structural engineer drawings have been provided by the artist team, Yasmina Chavez and ha Javier Sanchez and an off-site permit application has been initiated. The Third Street Public Art Project, which is part of the Atomic Tumbleweed, will be the sculpture and then also poetry, will be placed along the sidewalks. So the material and the application that we had originally looked at applying actually fail to meet our expectations. So the staff is currently seeking um, quotes to do on-site concrete engraving. Um, as Commissioner Chair Jim Breer mentioned, um, the Office of Cultural Affairs is seeking an artist or team of artists to create an original work of art 
for the West Charleston Boulevard underpass. The request for proposals uh, was posted on September 8th and closes on October 8th. So if you know of anyone who's interested in this project, please ask them to visit the website that was given, ngemnv.com, for more information. Rebecca Holden, for the Contemporary Public Art Program, you'll recall the four Solar Walk and Swizzle Contemporary Public Art Program sculptures by Randy Mendray were recommended for permanent acquisition by the Arts Commission at the July 16th, 2020 meeting. And so we've worked on a contract modification to the original agreement, which has been drafted, and it also includes a required completion of the maintenance and conservation forms for each piece. We look forward to having that completed in the near future. Apologize, Laura Machado. We're also working on a historic markers project. So we went and talked to the Historic Preservation Commission and they're interested in developing and working with the Arts Commission and the Cultural Affairs staff to develop a historic markers program for the entire city of Las Vegas. So um, in the next meeting, we'll probably discuss about how we can talk about creating some sort of a subcommittee meeting that the Arts Commission would host um, and talk about the development of this project along with the Historic Preservation Commission. Rebecca Holden, for maintenance and conservation, the Office of Cultural Affairs Visual Arts Unit regularly conducts condition reports of items in the collection, and then these reports are used to generate a listing of current maintenance and conservation efforts. Members of the public are also encouraged to reach out to us with any maintenance or graffiti concerns relating to the public art collection, and that can be directed to publicart at lasvegasnevada.gov. Featured is some of our most recent graffiti on the snowball sculpture, which was easily removed, thank goodness. Um, I'd also like to point out that the Crosby DeMoss paintings, which were removed from the city council chamber entryway here, those two have both been restored so into their location. So be sure to enjoy them on your way out this evening. Additionally, for maintenance and conservation, the city's Moore homeless outreach team was engaged to assist with providing services to homeless individuals at an encampment at 9th and Fremont Streets, which was located alongside the AMP downtown cabinet painted by Caitlin Seville. Additionally, the Pioneer Trail marker plaques for the Las Vegas Paiute Colony, Binion House, Kim Produce Farm, and Moulin Rouge have all been replaced. So you can see on the left is the old sign and on the right is the newly replaced sign. The Ansan Sister City Park sculpture repairs have all been completed. So that includes um, removing the slate, reinforcing the concrete base, reinstalling the slate, and doing a thorough cleaning and waxing of the bronze plaque and sculptures. The 223-foot-long Nautilus mural by Larger Than Life Murals, which is located at the municipal pool at 431 East Bonanza Road, is to, go, is to undergo restoration. It will likely be a multi-phased restoration, first starting with a process which will stabilize the existing paint and also enhance some of those existing colors. And then we'll reevaluate and see if any next steps are needed to possibly in-paint some of the missing information. Also, we have exciting news. The Office of Cultural Affairs City Hall offices will be relocated to the Charleston Heights Art Center, located at 800 South Brush Street, effective September 28th, 2020. So you can reach us all still by our regular phone numbers and email addresses. Our address, though, has changed effective in a few weeks. The Symphony Park Garage project is moving forward. Domsky Glass has been issued a fully executed contract and they provided the city with their first milestone invoice. Uh, they will meet with the project manager and a timeline will be determined as soon as possible. The T Alley Public Art Project. So we are happy to say that Las Vegas Canyon Alley Steel by Letha Wilson was installed on September 10th, 2020. You can see um, on the slide in front of you, Letha to the, the left, the proposed project. Next, the installed sculpture. 
and then the current state of the sculpture. So when, when the piece was installed, um, unfortunately the area behind the sculpture and the foundation had been painted without authorization. So the Office of Cultural Affairs public art team will go out and paint the wall behind the sculpture and the foundation with a color that's been selected by the artist and that will happen within the next few weeks. Um, we look forward to having it painted and ready to display and have some sort of dedication for the, the newly installed sculpture. That is a summary of the updated projects that we're currently working on. Does uh, anyone have any questions about anything that we've recently gone over? Thank you very much, uh, Laura and Rebecca. Moving on to item number seven, discussion and possible action regarding the annual election of officers. Uh, Laura. Thank you, this is Laura Machado. So in order for us to stay in accordance with the Arts Commission bylaws, the election of officers is to be held at the annual September meeting. If you remember, we had recently had the election and it was held at the December meeting. So Jim Breer was appointed chair as well. Mickey Sprott was vice chair. Richard Plaster is second vice chair and that ha happened in December of 2019. So in order to be in compliance with the bylaws, um, we would like to ask for this election to, to be held at this meeting, and then we can have it held at the next September meeting in 2021. It's my understanding that the current um, individuals in their seats are still interested in serving in the same capacity, and they're able to do so within the term limits. So um, that's why we're, we're talking about this agenda today, agenda item. I'll move to elect the slate as stated. I'll second. So all in favor of keeping the current uh, officers for the uh, Arts Commission until the elect next election, which would be in September of 2021, say aye. 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 Opposed? Seeing that there's no opposed, the motion carries. I thank everyone for, uh, and, and my colleagues, uh, for uh, your faith in another year of high level, top performance chairmanship. <laughs> um, the next item is number eight, discussion for possible action regarding the new AMP utility cabinet project for Ward 6. Um, this is one of uh, three items that we've already approved in, uh, in a committee concept, but we haven't approved it as a Arts Commission concept, if I understand the clarification correctly. So. Is there any discussion for the AMP project for Ward 6? This is Chair Kern. I thought we'd already approved it, uh, so I'll move to approve again. The second? Uh, Sprout second. Okay, all in favor of approving the uh, AMP utility cabinet painting for Ward 6, say aye. 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 Opposed? Seeing that there's no opposed, the motion carries. Item number nine. This is the same type of thing. The discussion, possible action regarding the freestyle amp, uh, what, I just uh, got ahead of myself. I think I just did number nine instead. Oh no, this is the uh, amp utility project. This is the kind of the open one with the $3,000 one. Um, so it's discussion and possible action regarding the new freestanding amp utility cabinet painting project. This one is for $3,000. Do I hear a motion for approval? This is Chair Curran, just to clarify. So this is one cabinet on Main Street, or can we just get a clarification on this one? Yeah, Rebecca Holden. Um, so as we discussed at the last meeting, we regularly receive requests from community members for freestanding cabinets for to be considered for the program. And so we had offered this up as a solution where if we received those requests, we would have funding available to consider those and we would bring them to the commission on a case by case basis to review. Um, it allows for the integrity of the separate freestanding programs in or the separate you know, ward programs that are 
a higher number of boxes in one area at a time, and then also allows for us to res be responsive to those requests that we receive, rather than a, you know providing people to feel like the only other option they have is to paint them themselves without getting any sort of permit or permissions. And the reason that they're they're on separate agenda items is we wanted to make sure that each project was clearly communicated to the public as a freestanding project with a budget <coughs> allocated to each one. So that's overall while we're going so down each one at a time. This one that we're voting on is that circled one on Main Street? No, no uh, Rebecca Holden, these are just samples. So AMP downtown, if you'll see those photos there on the left side of the slide, those are examples of when we received other funding and we were able to do these freestanding projects on these water cabinets. And then the one indicated on the right side is a sample location request we received for cabinets at Main Street and Colorado, I believe. Is anyone else still? I, I'm just confused. What is this 3,000 going to? A to be determined location or this location or? Rebecca Holden, correct. So the 3,000 is, is a separate amount that would be set aside so that when we receive these freestanding requests from community members, um, say I, I work with the Arts District and I've received requests from Arts District members before, or if there's a cabinet that another community member says, I'd really like to have this painted, we can actually have now a, um, a pathway to receive those inquiries and then be able to field them with the commission on a case-by-case -case basis, rather than funneling them through the larger project that may take place in a different ward at a different time. So um, if, if the commission receives future locations and requests and determines not to fund any of those, none of the 3,000 would be spent. Um, but it was just a, a small amount to set aside to see if this could work to assist the community members that are asking for these. Understood. Thank you for the clarification. I'm in support of the case by case in general. I just thought those tiny little, they look like RPDAs. I mean, that's, they're pretty small and I just don't think it would be a very effective use of our dollars. But in general, I'm for the concept, so. Uh, $3,000 a little high for those small boxes? Rebecca Holden, so the $3,000 is is an amount that's allocated, but it is not allocated towards any particular okay. cabinets or locations. Um, it is, it is a, an amount that would be not entirely used on any cabinet at a time. It was just, it would be a flexible fund that we could individually distribute to if locations were deemed to be appropriate. This is Commissioner Sprout, so maybe the clarify would be that each individual project that is brought to you would have a different price range depending on the size of that piece. And once you determined what you think the price should be, then you would come to this commission and ask for approval to paint that piece, correct? Correct. So does anyone want to move to uh, approve or deny? This is Chair Kern. I will move to approve a $3,000 allocation for a to-be-determined freestanding AMP utility cabinet painting project. I will second it. Uh, so all in favor of approval, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. The motion carries. Right, moving on to item number 10, discussion for possible action regarding the new Ward 3 Proud Banner Project, which is $33,000 of the Percent for Arts Fund. We've talked about this last month, and before we uh, move into discussion on this, we do have a, an email comment that has been sent uh, regarding this, and uh, I would ask the representative for the City Attorney's Office to read that into the record, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Seth Floyd, yeah, we did receive uh, an email with a comment on this item, and I'll just read it into the record. It says, greetings, arts commissioners. Regarding agenda item 10 and the budgeted $33,288.98 for Ward 3 Proud Banners, what is the design for these banners? Are they being done by commissioned artists or internal city staff? If these are not being done by commissioned artists from the Ward 3 community, I am opposed to the expenditure. There have been numerous other arts projects presented and discussed for Ward 3 over the years, and this project seems arbitrary and insignificant compared to those that were presented previously. Unless it is designed by local artists, I am opposed to this project. Best regards, Melissa Clary. 
Thank you. Um, any discussions on this? Uh, John Pacheco. John Pacheco, um, I don't know if this pertains to what we talked about last month, but we were talking about uh, Stewart Street to Eastern, Bonanza Street to Eastern, and uh, I took a drive, but I took a drive down Charleston to Nellis, which is the whole ward, Stewart to Nellis, which is still the ward, uh, um, Bonanza to Nellis, which is still the ward, and Washington, which is still a ward. There's a vast area that's never been touched in the Hispanic community, and I don't know why, over all these years, that no money has been put down there. And we go all the way up to uh, Summerlin, and I think something should be done, and I think this should be discussed at future meetings. So, is there any way we can put that on agenda? Well, is there any way we can put that on agenda? Well, we do have the opportunities for commissioners to add items to the agenda that come at the end of our, our meetings. So okay. I guess the answer would be yes. Uh, we should discuss uh, with that ward. Is there anyone, um, does the city have any kind of, can you refresh our memories as to um, about the, the scope of the project and how, how it's, uh, and for those, um, how the percent for art is, allocated versus our, our, our funding, you know, within our, you know, how that relates to our funding. Rebecca Holden, um, thank you. As a refresher for this, uh, the Office of Cultural Affairs was approached by the um, Redevelopment Agency and members of the Economic and Urban Development Department regarding a proposal to incorporate artistically designed banners to enhance major thoroughfares in Ward 3 and instill community pride. And so the proposed locations were Eastern, Owens to Sahara, Bonanza, Maryland to Lamb, Stewart, Eastern to Lamb. And the commission did raise a few questions at our last meeting. At this point, the parameters are fairly broad and it is really up to the commission to indicate when allocating the funding, it, if and when allocating the funding, what kind of contingencies there are with it. So, um, but if there, are, if there are requirements that it is local artists who are specific to the Ward 3 area, then we would just incorporate that into our call for artists and artwork. So it would be a requirement for them to in, indicate their residential location or something. I'm not sure how we would work it out. but. Yeah. Um, so the discussion at our last meeting, it was left fairly open. There were a lot of questions about the variables and um, we deferred back to the commission members for how they might like to see this project go. Um, it is, we do have representatives from the Economic and Urban Development Department and also from the Ward 3 office today as well. Um, and they can be called forward if there are any questions also. Okay. So this is Commissioner Sprout. So. Uh, I think also with that, there was a discussion about the funding and where that funding could be allocated to uh, versus permanent parts of this project versus uh, non-permanent parts of this project, correct? And is that still true that the funding really can only be for the permanent parts of this project? Rebecca Holden, we did do some reflection on the municipal code, and I don't know um, if the city attorney has any, anything to add relating to that. Um, I think our determination based on that information is that it's projects that are relating to capital improvement projects. And so if you would consider the city roadway to be capital and the light poles that are provided by the city to be capital, then it would fall into those parameters. But I'll, um, Seth, did you have anything to add to that? Sure, yeah, I, the Seth Floyd, I would just add to that that there are some rules about what that funding can be used for. There's about 10, in fact, I have the code provision here if I can find it real quick. I think there's about 10 subsections of things that that funding can be used for, what components of the art uh, that it can be used for. Um,
Yeah, so I, I would have to go back and evaluate whether this actually falls into one of those categories. If you give me just a minute, I can pull that section and, and take a closer look. Yeah, I think we could. Yep, I think we could also have some additional conversation because, you know, none of us voted this in last time. We just kind of held it off. And, you know, I think also the other uh, discussion was just um, at that price point, if it was that we could only pay for the permanent stuff, then we weren't even actually paying for the art and it was just, um, you know, light pole brackets, shipping and labor and, uh, you know, it's, but there was another discussion that was happening as well last month, which was that, um, you know, maybe we fund a portion of this so that they could go out and get the grants that they need or, or find funding in other departments and sections of the city of Las Vegas. So I think that should be maybe the dialogue is do we support giving some type of funding to help with that to get that gasoline started, right? This is John Curran to that point. Yeah, I think that's uh, a great idea and sort of, you know, when you're doing a fundraising project, as I shared last week or last month, the first thousand or first 10,000 you raise is the hardest. And, you know, once you sort of get that, that helps uh, carry momentum for other donors. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of times people are reluctant to be the first. So uh, 33,000 is a good chunk of our budget, but in my eyes, like a third of that, maybe $10,000 would, would be a good start. I did hear uh, a comment about um, local artists, and in, in fact, limiting to artists in Ward 3. Uh, you know, I think Ward 3, I, I'm very happy to see Ward 3 beautified with more artistic projects, but I just, I'm reluctant to narrow the scope to uh, require the artists to reside in Ward 3. That just really narrows down your pool of artists. Ward 3 probably represents about 5% of the population of Southern Nevada, so I'd be all in favor of requiring the artists to live in Southern Nevada or Clark County or something, but you know, you're John really Pacheco. gonna narrow your pool down if it's just in Ward 3. Uh, John Pacheco, uh, one particular... Am I on? Uh, one particular thing about Ward 3, it's a Hispanic area, and the Latin culture has to be represented in that area, and that's what the pride is all about. So if we go outside of it, then we're not representing the area. That's a very large area, isn't it? From Washington to, um, to, to Nellis, Nellis over to Charleston and back up. Uh, and there's a lot of Hispanics and a lot of high schools and a lot of grade schools and a lot of artists that uh, haven't been really touched yet. And it should be a, a Latino pride type project. Sure, well, I would just say there's, there's Hispanics across Southern Nevada, not just exclusively in Ward 3. I, I mean, I just worry, Ward 3's population is probably 100,000 out of, you know, 2 million plus. Again, that's like less than 5 million, 5% of you know, our population. If you just narrow it down so much, it might, you know, I want to make sure this art is meaningful and impactful and I'm ha if, it, if it's, Hispanic heritage, I'm all for that. I just, you know, we have Hispanics all across Southern Nevada. John Pacheco, could we uh, call it a Hispanic pride or a Hispanic heritage thing? Like this month is National Hispanic Heritage Month. Uh, and, and call it something like that to, to bring in Latino artists. Um, so I, I comment to that. And then I also want to ask DA about that as well. So. When you're doing purchasing and doing an RFQ, uh, you know, there's some pretty strict requirements and, and I don't know that you could significantly point out one district and say only these people from this district can apply. <coughs> um, so I'd question that. But I do like the idea of, you know, you could make the general scope General scope could be a lot of different things. You could you could identify the Hispanic community. Um, you could say that you want um, that there is some portion of the artists working with the community to develop those pieces. That would work as well. Where then you have that community engagement and you have that buy-in, and it doesn't exclude. Uh, this district and anyone in that district being able to apply for it and receive it, but it does give um, everyone a, an opportunity. 
John Pacheco. There, there are 20 Hispanic countries. That's a big scope, uh, you know, from Mexico all the way down to, to tip of Chile and Spain and Cuba, of course. That is a lot of artwork that could be considered. 20 countries. This is Chair Breer. The, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna back up just a little bit with regard to the amount of funding and so forth. If, what, what do my fellow commissioners think if we were to fund 100, uh, or I'm sorry, $10,000 solely for the artistic portion of the project that it would be towards the selection and the um, honorarium and, and whatever artistic uh, fees go towards the project and then that would accomplish es essentially um, the artistic element of it and then the, the hardware and, and all the technical parts can still be uh, open to getting funded um, outside, of the, uh, outside of our group. If that was the case, it looks like your design and artwork uh, was $8,000. That's what I was looking for. Uh, Rebecca Holden, for reference, this information here is provided based upon the First Street Art Trail, which the Office of Cultural Affairs has funded for a few years now, which is eight blocks along First Street. Um, so this information is very low low estimate for what these corridors in Ward 3 would likely require. The light poles in Ward 3 are significantly larger than those along the First Street Art Trail, and so you're looking at much larger vinyl banners, so that's a larger printing cost, and I'm sure the hardware associated with that is also probably going to need to be a bit more substantial, or perhaps it's the same hardware just spaced out differently on the poles. Um, and so if just in having that information in mind, you know, the, the actual design and artwork allocation indicated here is based off of the First Street Art Trail, which has eight blocks, and we commission each artist $1,000 for licensing the use of their work per block. So we can implement something similar to that. Uh, it may break down a little bit differently based on the areas indicated um, and how many you're thinking of, but just to give you a better idea of, of the context for that, um, and then these banners, they last about a year in a good year. Um, I'm assuming because these are a lot larger that they'll probably pick up more wind and may need to be, you know, reevaluated more frequently. But we oversee a lot of banner collections through the city. So we oversee the city's Berkeley Square banner program, the Pioneer Trail banner program, the First Street Art Trail. So it's not something that we're unfamiliar with. It's just, that's just part of the maintenance costs associated with it. And, um, but just all, all good things to keep in mind when talking about the pricing and the budget. This is uh, Member Curran. So we'd expect after a year we'd owe another, call it 8,000 bucks for more printing, production, installation, and removal labor. So that 8,000 is sort of in perpetuity? Rebecca Holden, so you would, um, it all depends on the program that you're working with. So for example, for the First Street Art Trail, those banners have been up for two years now and they have not needed to be replaced. It's a different corridor. Um, but so we haven't had to pay for the replacement of those. And then we also, it's not a renewable licensing fee that we pay to the artists. So we paid them a one-time licensing fee for the use of their imagery in this program. So if you wanted to establish the Ward 3 Proud program that maybe changes out every three years, and so you would just replace banners as needed, and those printing costs would be covered, but you would otherwise just be paying the artist fees the one time. Sure, but the two, um, the production and installation, oh, that, those added up to over 8,000 as well. That's what I was referencing. Correct, and it would be, it's, it's all pretty dependent on what you want as well, because at this time, depending on the project, we may be able to work internally with the city's traffic team to do a lot of that work, or we may have to contract it out. It really just, there's a, there's a lot of variables, but in the case of the First Street Art Trail, we contract that work out because it is 66 banners that need to be installed and they have a pretty tight team, so. Seth, did you, you want to add something? So the question that I was looking up uh, earlier was whether the banner project f fell within the scope of what uh, you could use funds for from the percent for the arts, and I think the answer is yes. Um, it, there, there's some broad categories of art that would fall in that category, so uh, to the extent there was a question about whether this type of project would fit, I, I think it does. 
Okay, um, checking if any of the commissioners have a, a comment. Um, Commissioner Hamblin? Um, yeah, this is Commissioner Haynes Hamblin. So uh, my question would be about the banners um, and how frequently we would be potentially commissioning new artwork uh, for those banners or if we would be looking at commissioning artwork that would stay up permanently and then as the banners wear out, for want of a better word, it would be replaced but with the same image of the artwork that was there before. Um, and if that's, if the, the former is the case, then I would, um, or sorry, the, if the latter is the case, then, um, you know, I would advocate for paying the artist a larger honorarium for the use of that image than we do, currently do for the aerial gallery program because we're essentially licensing that image in perpetuity rather than for just a period of one year or two years. Rebecca Holden, thank you. I will echo that observation because that brings up a good point. You know, the example of the Berkeley Square banners, the Office of Cultural Affairs actually worked with the Historic Planning Commission, Historic Preservation Commission, um, to have Joseph Watson create original works of art, which the city purchased as part of the, commissioned and has as part of the permanent collection, but also has the licensing ability to, those were created so that they could be produced onto banners and we just, whenever they need repairs, we print them and have new ones made. And so um, along the lines of what Ali was recommending, there's definitely different ways to work out something like this. There's a lot of different ways to go about it. Um, this is Laura Machado. I, I just wanted to ask a question of the commission. Do you think that it would be useful if a scope was developed to talk about exactly the length the type of banner, the budget associated, the number of the polls, obey the item, and then come back and talk about exactly what this project is looking for, the artistic services fee, how we, we go about requesting those services, is, is if it's an RFQ, if it's an RFP, um, so that when allocating money for this project, you, you know what you're approving. Is that something that you think would be beneficial and we can obey the item and come back at the next meeting that would have more information? Well, this is Commissioner Haynes Hamlin. I, uh, to be honest with you, I would support that because I feel like there's a lot of variables and if this and maybe that's right now and it would, it would certainly make me feel more comfortable about what the money is paying for specifically. John Pacheco, um, I recently put up some banners like that downtown, but they were signs, and uh, I have connections to find out the prices and everything, and basically the mechanism on top and bottom will slide up and down, so it really doesn't matter. Hardware doesn't cost any more. The, any, the, the poles just stick out of fiberglass, and fiberglass poles, whether they're 24 inch or 30 inch, doesn't cost hardly any more. But if you want at a future meeting, I could get prices to show you the difference if you change from a 24 by 36 to a 24 by 48 or 24 by five foot or a 30 inch, you know, the difference in, in cost and all that, I could report back. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Pacheco. Um, as, as one who uh, really doesn't like the concept of kicking the can, I would say uh, absolutely yes, please, um, it, there, it, to support uh, Commissioner Hayes Hamblin's uh, position, uh, there's, there is too many variables for me to feel comfortable about voting for this. In concept, I love the idea and I, w and I would love to see it bigger and I would love to see it more community based and I would love to see it uh, uh, set up in a way that would allow it to be a, um, a perpetual uh, project that uh, enhances the culture of the, of the area. So um, with that I would um, What's that? I would like to comment as well okay. if I can. Yep. Um, so I would like the same thing. Those sound great. Um, I do want to express definitely that I would like to see community involvement in the scope. And then I, you know, you don't have to get into like, to me, you don't have to get into like the full, full detail of the scope. Um, but it would be nice to know, you know, how many artists is gonna be hired for this? Is it uh, one artist that's gonna provide four images for you? 
or is it going to be three artists that provide one image a piece? You know, just to kind of see where that that kind of the bigger yep. pictures of this um, can be identified. Thank you. Uh, Pacheco, uh, John Pacheco, I, I think that this is, could be turning into a bigger scope than we expected. I think that we can't do this in one meeting, maybe not even two meetings, that we should look at it like everybody else is talking about. We should discuss it more. Commissioner Shefsik, do you have an um, opinion that you would like to add? Since we don't get to see you raising your hand or anything, I just want to make sure that, that you have the <laughs> opportunity to be heard. Well, I pretty much agree with what has been voiced already. I, one question came to mind. Uh, if the city purchases the, like the rights to the image and can continue to reproduce it, um, and if a banner should wear out after a period of time, could it be reproduced and put up again? And then uh, with additional banners in three years, new artists, new banners put up as well. So there's... Uh, they're continually building on the um, number of banners that are uh, on display. Uh, it was just a question that came up. I don't know how relevant it is to the discussion right now, but that's everything else that I've heard about putting it uh, or obeying it and continually discuss and investigate uh, what the parameters would be. I am in agreement with that. But uh, the only question was, uh, it's like you're building a collection, if that's a possibility. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Jerry. Um, any other discussion on this point? All right, um, I might ask the, uh, the city attorneys uh, if, if you give us guidance to we, if we, I don't believe we're gonna be taking any action on this today, so um, we would just like to, um, I can't remember the term when we, obey, obey. we're going to obey this until uh, a time when the city can, uh, staff can provide us some a little bit more specific information and a little bit more uh, concrete structure for the project. Mr. Chairman, uh, Seth Floyd, yeah, so you have a couple of options. If you obey the item, you just need to identify the specific meeting at which you're going to obey it to. If, if you don't know and you, you can't specify that meeting, uh, you could table the item and then it could be re-agendized, if that's okay. a word, uh, at the appropriate time. But if, if you just want to kick it to the next meeting, you could obey it to a date certain at the next meeting. Okay, so um, I move that we obey this item until October, until our October meeting. I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any Aye. opposed? Moving on to the next item, uh, number 11. Report by John Pacheco, Ward 3, appointed Arts Commissioner regarding power, power coatings. Uh, hand that over to Commissioner Pacheco. Hello, uh, Commissioner Pacheco here. I went out to a powder coating company called Electrostatic Painting, Inc. First, I went to the one at Maine in Charleston. They were totally rude. They didn't have time to talk to me. So I went all the way out to Blue Diamond Road in Arville, I think that's what you said, something like that. Uh, and the guy was very nice, very big company. They started in, uh, in 2089, no, not 2009, 1989. And uh, they're a very successful company. Basically, uh, uh, electrostatic is they get the metal, they sandblast it, they, they put a wire to it, and they spray powder, and the powder sticks to it. Then they put it in these ovens and bake it to 400 degrees. They're an un, just, un, just tons of colors. And I have a color book if anybody wants to see it. But in any available color, uh, They'll last anywhere from four to eight years. He said he had a fence that it's white and he's had it up for eight years. It fades out though. It turns flat in eight years, but the reds could go in four years and the oranges and colors like that, magentas. The problem with it, if we buy something and we have to re repaint it, you have to take it and it has to be completely sanded off back to metal at 80 bucks an hour. So it's not cheap. And then it has to be totally redone. It, it can't be just touched up. So it's something to look at if we uh, decide to totally purchase it or take on a, a commitment to keep it up. So the orange and red colors can last four. They'll start fading. They will never chip or crack. 
uh, they can scuff because it is paint and it's only gone up to 400 degrees. But it's, it's pretty reliable. But the problem is, is it has to be taken all the way back down to the metal to redo it. So that means like, like those swizzle sticks, can you imagine taking each one out, taking them back, sand, having them sandblast it, and, and matching all the colors back. So uh, we must look at what it costs to redo them uh, or, you know, on those short-term one-year things, uh, one-year art projects. Um, I personally think that a short-term art project should be two years because I don't know how any artist can put that much work into something to only see it up for one year. And then they can take it home because it, it, it could turn into quite a costly thing depending on how many colors and how many pieces have to be redone for the city. Uh, I left a business card on, in front of everybody and then I got the colors here, which doesn't matter, they, they, they can do any colors, but these, these basic colors have one price and then all the others are custom colors. Just like if you go to an automotive paint store. So anyway, that's about it. It's uh, quite a process, and they really know their stuff. Thank you, Commissioner Pacheco. It's very interesting stuff. All right, let's bring us to item number 12, discussion for possible action regarding the appointment of Jennifer Clevin to replace Jerry Shefsik on the Arts Commission, effective October 15th, 2020. Uh, that's our next meeting, and for, um, for background on that, I'll turn it over to Laura. This is Laura Machado. Thank you. The Office of Cultural Affairs recommends the appointment of Jennifer Clevin to the City of Las Vegas Arts Commission. Jennifer has a rich background in the arts and culture stemming from her time at UNLV in the College of Fine Arts. After graduating from college with degrees in studio art and art history, she interned at a local thriving art gallery and opened her own gallery, Clevin Contemporary, in 2010. She also pursued a career in the museum field, gaining employment at the Neon Museum in 2011 and continues to work there today. We look forward to having Jennifer Clevin serve on the Arts Commission. Very good, thank you very much. Um, I move that we approve the appointment of Ms. Clevin to uh, the Arts Commission and look forward to seeing her next month. Second. Does anyone want a second? There's a second. Oh, okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Very well. So uh, we look forward to uh, having her join us next month. Item number 13, discussion regarding topics for future agenda items. Comments made during this portion of the agenda by individual members shall refer solely to proposals for future agenda items and any discussion shall be limited to whether or not such proposed items are within the purview of the commission and or whether such proposal items should be placed on future agenda. No discussion regarding the substance of any such proposal topic shall occur and no action shall be taken. John Pacheco, um, I would like to, to propose that sometime in the future we just discuss area uh, uh, Ward 3 and uh, you know, to, to take a look at it from Washington to Nellis, uh, Bonanza to Nellis, all from Las Vegas Boulevard, uh, Stewart to Nellis, and Charleston to Nellis, which n that's totally an open canvas. Has anybody here driven it yet? Go ahead. Well, just through normal, uh, I've, I've driven it through, you know, normal yeah. daily. It, it's really clean, access. especially Stewart Street. It's very clean, and Bonanza, it's, it's like a, an empty canvas, it's beautiful. So. Can I just ask a little clar clarification? Um, what specifically would you like to talk about on those streets? Well, I just want a discussion on what the Arts Commission could do in the future uh, I'm not sure, I'm not a very good budget man, and uh, I just want to create some discussion. Sometime, and, and nothing, nothing specific. So you're looking to identify, maybe have staff identify a potential project yes, someplace yes, yes. within the city of Las Vegas jurisdiction? Something for the Latino community. Because it, it, 
I mean, those streets do flip flop back and forth between City of North Las Vegas and Clark no, County. No, none of them. Uh, City of North Las Vegas might start at Washington. Yeah. Uh, but uh, not Stewart, not, uh, not uh, of course, Bonanza or Charleston or those three. But I, I will check on, on, uh, on Washington. I'm quite sure Washington goes all the way through. But I'm not sure I'll check for any future. That's all. I just wanted to, for future. There was a project that we looked at a long time ago that it was an underpass project. And I can't recall if that was in Ward 3 or not. And I'm not sure. It doesn't show up on any of the programs now. And so did we end up abandoning that? Or is that just kind of in long term? Yeah. This is Laura Machado. Um, the Bruce Street underpass between Stewart and oh, I'm trying to, I can't remember what the other cross street. We talked about um, working with the planning department mm -hmm. on having some sort of activation under the underpass right there. Um, unfortunately, the planning department was working on a 10-year plan, and we had allocated funds to be used. And those funds would not have been able to be used for so many years. So although the project was approved by the Arts Commission, we revisited it, and then it was determined by the commission that we would, we would reallocate those funds. And when the project was closer to, to becoming active that we would bring it back to the Arts Commission. Okay. Thank you for refreshing our memories. Any other discussion regarding topics for future agenda items? Yes, this is Member Curran. I would like to agendize a report by Josh Levine. He's the director, the art director for Area 15, which opens today. And he's got a lot of other uh, public art installations and projects around the, the valley. So he would be eager and willing to share a report on, on those. Excellent. Any others? Very good, we're moving on to item number 14, citizens participation. Public comment during this portion of the agenda must be limited to matters within the jurisdiction of the commission. No subject may be acted upon by the commission unless that subject is on the agenda and is scheduled for action. If you wish to be heard, come forward and give your name for the record. The amount of time, the, the amount of discussion on any subject as well as the amount of time uh, that each speaker is allowed may be limited. Is there anyone? All right, seeing that, we move on to item number 15, with this, which is adjournment, so we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone, for coming, and we will see you on October 15th.